Only six people died by it. Deadly pufferfish delicacy served across Japan. Did you know that pufferfish, also known as fugu, are one of the most poisonous animals in the world? Only looking for one thing, toxic wild fugu, as fresh as possible. One pufferfish has enough toxin to kill 30 adult humans, and there is no antidote. Yet some people will pay a fortune to eat this deadly delicacy. Every year. But in high season, it could cost you $265 per kilo. Which could cost you up to $265 per kilogram. Why is that? And how do they prepare it without risking their lives? Join us as we delve into This is Why Pufferfish, Fugu, is so expensive. Modern fish processing. These fascinating fish, which are found worldwide in tropical and subtropical environments, are members of the Tetrodontidae family. Their unique capacity to swell and inflate their bodies in the presence of danger is what makes them unique. It appears as an innocent-looking fish until it turns into a spiky, powerful creature that can deftly fend off predators. And then he kind of just followed us around the rest of the night. However, the drama is far from over. In addition to their impressive defense, Pufferfish have a dangerous secret, toxicity. The majority contain tetrodotoxin, a strong neurotoxin that is mostly found in their organs. If someone is brave enough to swallow it, it can cause respiratory failure, paralysis, and even death. Treatment becomes a race against time to maintain essential activities until the toxin disappears because there is no known counteradote. In 2018, when a supermarket accidentally sold five packets of the fish that hadn't had the poisonous liver removed, Strangely, despite the risks, pufferfish, especially revered as fugu in Japan, bogey in Korea, and hetun in China, find themselves on dinner plates. Specially trained chefs in these regions delicately prepare fugu, skillfully avoiding the toxic parts while preserving the edible flesh. Served as sashimi or in a steaming hot pot, fugu is celebrated for its subtle flavor, chewy texture, and low-fat content. Sashimi, mm. both sides. To make a sashimi, we need to make a filet. In the lively world of Japanese culture, fugu stands out as a fascinating fish that embodies the idea of wabi-sabi, a fancy term for appreciating things that are a bit imperfect and fleeting. It's a delicate balance between fancy and risky, requiring skill and courage from those who want to taste its unique flavors. You'll often find this mysterious fish gracing tables during special celebrations like the New Year bringing both respect and excitement to those feeling adventurous. This ultimate in gourmet pleasures is mainly enjoyed in Japan when there is something to celebrate. Now, let's dive into the past. Fugu's story goes way back to the Jomon period, a time when people first started munching on this fish. But here's the twist. There were bans on eating it now and then because unfortunately it caused some health problems. Fast forward to the Meiji period and things took a turn for the better. Prime Minister Ito Hirobumi, after trying a bit, did indeed lift the ban on the fish. And just like that, fugu became a big deal in Japanese cuisine, making its way into poems, art, and stories. What we serve here is 100% non-toxic. There are also different types of fugu fish. Leading the pack is the torafugu, the heavyweight champion renowned for its prestige and, paradoxically, its potent poison. Despite its toxicity, this prized species is cherished for its subtle flavor and chewy texture, making it the king of the fugu realm. Then there's the humble kusafugu, a small and common fugu variety that often finds its way into the frying pan or comforting soups. Sporting a distinctive dark green back adorned with white spots, this unassuming species brings a touch of simplicity to the diverse fugu offerings. Stepping into the world of luxury, there's Shosafugu, a rare and expensive fugu species boasting a unique striped pattern on its skin. This distinguished member of the fugu family takes the spotlight as a prized choice, often served with elegance as sashimi or in a delightful hot pot known as nabe. The Uozai restaurant exclusively serves its guest fugu captured in the wild. The Higan fugu adds a touch of intrigue. A medium-sized species with a moderate level of toxicity, it features a mesmerizing panther-like pattern on its skin. 
This mysterious fugu is not only visually captivating, but also finds its way onto plates as sashimi or a delectable nabe dish. Each fugu species brings its own charm to the table, creating a mosaic of flavors and experiences for those willing to take a bite into the world of this extraordinary Japanese delicacy. For those who love fugu, it's not just about taste, it's a whole journey. Think about where it's caught, Shimonoseki, Nagasaki, Hyogo, or Yamaguchi. Throw in the season and origin, and you've got a recipe for deciding how good and pricey it's going to be. The world of fugu is like a colorful patchwork quilt, blending history, skill, and the joy of savoring something extraordinary with every single bite. And since we mentioned where it's caught, how exactly is it fished? The puffer fish to get full on the chum. You just kind of want them to get it congregated around it, and that way we can sight fish them. There are two main ways these intriguing fish make it to your plate. The wild method and the farm method. Let's dive deeper. Wild fugu is found in the Pacific Ocean, especially around Japan, Korea, and China. The tiger puffer is a standout in the wild fugu lineup, growing up to 60 centimeters and weighing a hefty 2 kilograms. Catching involves classic techniques like hook and line, gill nets, trawls, and traps, with one called kato, using a special tackle to lure and snag fugu near the surface. Kitchen and see how it's taken apart. Take it away. So right now we have the net. But here's the deal. Wild fugu can carry tetrodotoxin, a serious neurotoxin produced by bacteria in fugu organs like the liver and ovaries. Handling and cooking wild fugu is a job for licensed chefs skilled at removing the toxic parts. Wild fugu can be unpredictable, changing with the seasons and environment, affecting availability, quality, and price. Fugu has no enemies there, but in Japan. Now, onto the farm scene. Thanks to high tech fish farming, fugu can be raised in freshwater or brackish water tanks, ponds, or cages, munching on a diet that keeps tetrodotoxin at bay. The perk? Farm fugu is toxin free and doesn't need a special chef's degree to be safe to eat. It's a reliable choice always there when you fancy some fugu with a consistent supply, quality, and price. But farm life isn't all sunshine. Farming fugu is pricier due to fancy feed, equipment, and care. Some argue it loses a bit of wild charm. The flavor and texture might not be the same. There's also the ethical side, concerns about using antibiotics, hormones, or even tweaking genes, and the potential impact on wild fugu and its home. So, whether wild or farm, fugu presents a balance between risk and convenience, flavor and ethics, making each bite an adventure on your plate. But it is not just this straightforward. As we cast our eyes deeper into the world of fugu, there's a flip side to the tale the environmental and sustainability challenges tied to fugu fishing. These challenges span from the fishing methods used to the impact on marine life touching on ethical and social considerations. Fishing methods such as purse seining and long lining, commonly employed in the capture of wild fugu, pose threats to marine biodiversity and habitats. These practices lead to unintended consequences, including bycatch, discards, and ghost fishing, all of which disrupt the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. Also, these methods also snag juvenile or undersized fugu, hampering their ability to reproduce and escalating the risk of overfishing. Overfishing looms large as a significant concern in the fugu fishing saga. The global catch of pufferfish has dropped by over 50% since 1990, raising alarm on the sustainability of the fishery. This decline reflects the strain caused by overexploitation, signaling a need for more robust management measures. Environmental contamination is another headache in the fugu fishing realm. Substances used in production, such as antibiotics, antiparasitics, hormones, and genetic modification tools, infiltrate the marine environment, impacting fish health, water quality, and the surrounding ecosystem. Antibiotics may bolster bacterial resistance and disrupt the microbial balance, while hormones can alter fish sex ratios and reproductive performance. Beyond the environmental front, ethical and social aspects demand attention. The welfare of the fish, consumer safety, and the rights and livelihoods of fishers and workers are in the spotlight. 
Fugu fishing involves handling highly toxic fish, necessitating special skills and regulations to prevent accidents. Yet cases of fugu poisoning are still there, often linked to illegal or unlicensed fishing and preparation. Small-scale and artisanal fishers face their own battles, contending with competition from larger industrial players in aquaculture, which can offer cheaper and supposedly safer alternatives. But what exactly are these toxins? Sure, you may know the name, but what exactly is the science behind it? One of the most intriguing and hazardous features of fugu is its toxicity, which, if improperly prepared, can result in deadly poisoning. The primary cause of the toxicity is a chemical known as tetrodotoxin, which is present in many fish organs but is particularly concentrated in the skin, eyes, liver, and ovaries. Strong neurotoxic tetradoxin paralyzes muscles, including the respiratory muscles, by blocking sodium channels in nerve cells. This prevents nerve impulses from being sent. Let's further try to understand the origin, distribution, structure, and effects of fugu tetrodotoxin, along with the reasons it is so dangerous to people's health. Instead of the fugu producing tetrodotoxin, bacteria that coexist with the fish do. These bacteria, which can be found in fish eggs, skin, and intestines, are members of the genera Schuonella, Pseudomonas, and Vibrio. The fish's bloodstream absorbs tetrodotoxin, which the bacteria produce from amino acids and other components. The toxin is subsequently stored by the fish in its organs, where it serves as protection against potential predators. By having changes in the sodium channels that lessen their sensitivity to the poison's binding, the fish also becomes resistant to the toxin. The species, season, food, habitat, and sex of the fish all affect the distribution and quantity of tetrodotoxin in fugu. The most highly valued species in the genus Takifugu for culinary purposes is the tiger puffer, Takifugu rubripes, which is also generally the most toxic. The liver, ovaries, and eyeballs are the most poisonous organs. The skin, intestines, and muscles are next in line of toxicity. It is estimated that a dose of 1 to 2 milligrams is deadly for humans, while the toxin concentration can vary from 1 to 25 milligrams per kilogram of tissue. With many hydroxyl and acetamido groups, in addition to a core guanidinium group, the molecular structure of trototoxin is complicated. The molecule is positively charged and has a strong affinity for the proteins known as sodium channels, which control how easily sodium ions pass through cell membranes. Nerve impulses are electrical signals that move information from one nerve cell to another, and they depend on the sodium channels to be generated and propagated. The binding of tetrodotoxin to sodium channels results in channel blockage, hence impeding the entry of sodium ions into the cell. As a result, movement and feeling are lost and nerve impulses are inhibited. The human body's reaction to tetrodotoxin is contingent upon the exposure method, dosage, and individual sensitivity. By consuming tainted fugu, oral consumption is the most frequent method of exposure. The effects typically start to show up 10 to 45 minutes after consumption. They include facial, lip, and tongue numbness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, and weakness. The symptoms worsen when the toxin damages the central nervous system, including low blood pressure, an irregular pulse, seizures, and trouble breathing, speaking, and swallowing. The poison can result in respiratory failure, coma, and even death in extreme circumstances. The clinical manifestations and the individual's history of fugu consumption are used to diagnose fugu toxicity. There is no specific antidote for tetrodotoxin, and the treatment is mainly supportive, consisting of artificial respiration, cardiac monitoring, and fluid therapy. The prognosis depends on the amount of toxin ingested and the time of treatment. The mortality rate of fugu poisoning is estimated to be 6.8%, and most deaths occur within four to six hours after ingestion. To sum it up, tetrodotoxin, a potent neurotoxin produced by bacteria, and deposited in the fish's organs, is the cause of the toxicity of fugu. Tetrodotoxin causes respiratory failure and muscle paralysis by blocking the sodium channels in nerve cells. 
Fugu poisoning is a dangerous illness with a high death rate that has to be treated with appropriate medical care. Although fugu is a delicacy that must be prepared and consumed with caution, it may also provide a fulfilling and exciting gastronomic experience. But with this caution, is there a chance for mistakes? And can you really trust the cook? Is there a specific way the cooks are trained? When it comes to fugu or pufferfish, the journey from the sea to the plate in Japan becomes a delicate dance between culinary skill and possible peril. If not handled with extreme care, this remarkable delicacy may expose diners to tetrodotoxic substances. Only licensed chefs who have undergone extensive training and certification are authorized to serve fugu to the general public. In order to become a licensed fugu chef, one must successfully complete a demanding two- or three-year apprenticeship program under the direction of a master chef. The main goal of this apprenticeship is to gain the knowledge and skills necessary to recognize, handle, and prepare different fugu species. The would-be cook studies the fugu's anatomy, physiology, and toxicity, in addition to learning the safety and hygienic precautions that are necessary for fugu preparation. After the apprenticeship, there's a difficult licensing exam to pass. It consists of three parts, a written exam covering the theory and rules of fugu preparation, a fish identification test that requires accurate classification of various fugu types, and a practical exam that involves both preparing and eating the fish. This difficult test has a passing percentage of about 35%. The delicate preparation process of fugu unfolds as a meticulous art, requiring the chef's undivided skill and concentration. Armed with a specialized knife known as a fugu hiki, the chef cautiously removes the skin, which, despite lacking scales, hides spines that can pose a threat. The next step involves precisely cutting open the fish's abdomen to extract the internal organs, liver, ovaries, intestines, and eyes, containing the highest concentrations of toxin. The chef must execute this task without contaminating the edible parts, such as the flesh, fins, and roe, which possess little or no toxin. Thorough washing, slicing, and disposal of toxic parts in a sealed container follow, with strict cleaning protocols for the knife, cutting board, and utensils after each use. The edible portions of fugu are versatile, finding their way onto plates in various forms. Sashimi, hot pot, deep fried, grilled, or boiled. If you're going to eat fugu in Japan, eat it safely at a chef-licensed restaurant. Sashimi, raw fish slices arranged in a chrysanthemum flower pattern, stands out as the most popular choice. Accompanied by a dipping sauce crafted from vinegar, soy sauce, and citrus juice, and adorned with condiments like grated radish, green onion, and chili pepper, fugu sashimi unveils a mild and delicate flavor paired with a firm, chewy texture. Some diners report a tingling sensation attributed to trace amounts of remaining toxin in the fish. Beyond the culinary adventure, partaking in fugu is a cultural and social affair. Considered a symbol of luxury, status, and courage, fugu graces special occasions like New Year's Eve, weddings, or business meetings. Tied to the Japanese aesthetic of wabi-sabi, Fugu consumption becomes a means of appreciating life's fragility, preciousness, and the chef's skill and artistry. In the tapestry of Japanese cuisine and culture, every bite of fugu is a celebration that weaves together tradition, skill, and a profound respect for life. And after it has been prepared, it is now ready to serve. But is it served like any other food? Let's explore the various ways fugu is served and enjoyed. P P Delving into the cultural significance, dining experience, consumer perceptions, and the allure that prompts individuals to willingly pay a high price for this delicacy. The pinnacle of refinement, sashimi, presents diners with raw fugu. Slices that are nearly translucent are arranged in the shape of a chrysanthemum flower and served with ponzu sauce. Maybe that's how he refined the recipe so well. And other condiments such as grated radish, green onion, and chili pepper. The texture of fugu sashimi is hard and chewy, and it has a mild, delicate flavor. It is a symbol of luxury that frequently adorns important events like weddings and New Year's Eve, signifying the bravery and status of those who consume it. Venturing to the Kansai region of Japan, especially Yamaguchi Prefecture, introduces the traditional hot pot, or nabe, experience with fugu. 
Takiri, or fugu chirinabe, incorporates pieces of fugu meat, tofu, mushrooms, and vegetables in a dashi broth served with ponzu sauce. This warm and comforting dish enjoyed communally is 100% non-toxic. If we break this law, we're ruined. Allows for a bonding experience as diners share the pot. The preparation, using the entire fish, bones, head, skin, and fins, adds depth and flavor to the broth. For those seeking a more modern and casual encounter, fugu karage, or deep-fried fugu, provides a crispy and satisfying experience. Coated in flour or starch and fried until golden, this dish can be enjoyed as a snack, appetizer, or main course. Paired with various sauces, such as mayonnaise, tartar sauce, or lemon juice, fugu karaj is a favorite among young people and families and is available in many restaurants and supermarkets. Exploring further, fugu yaki or grilled fugu imparts a smoky and savory flavor with a tender and juicy texture. I'm not afraid at all. I ate fugu as a child and it always tasted very good to me. Fugu nimono, a boiled preparation with soy sauce, sugar, sake, and ginger, delivers a sweet and salty flavor with a soft and flaky texture. Fugu himono, the dried version, boasts a concentrated and rich flavor, complemented by a chewy and elastic texture. Beyond the gastronomic adventure, dining on fugu becomes a psychological and emotional journey. Many partake in the thrill and excitement of tasting something potentially lethal, appreciating the skill and artistry of the chef. It becomes a way of expressing courage, curiosity, and adventurousness, as well as a celebration of life and a confrontation with mortality. Consumer perceptions of fugu vary widely, ranging from positive to negative and from rational to irrational. Some view it as a delicacy, luxury, and status symbol, willingly paying a premium. Others see it as a challenge, a gamble, and a rite of passage, embracing the risk. For some, fugu represents tradition, culture, and heritage, deserving preservation. However, there are those who perceive it as a danger, poison, and taboo, unwilling to try. Fugu may be seen as a waste, cruelty, and threat by some, garnering their reluctance to support it. <laughs> To sum it up, fugu stands as a unique and captivating fish, offering a range of flavors and dining experiences, from sashimi to karage and tekshiri to himono. Each dish holds its own appeal and each dining experience carries its own thrill, emotion, and meaning. While fugu demands careful preparation and consumption, it rewards those willing to take the plunge with a unique and exhilarating culinary experience.